All right. Hello and welcome everybody to Nap Time. It's a uh, we. I'm your host, uh, Spinan, on a senior citizen, as well as a uh, my co-host, Namas, who's a recent retiree, if only because uh, we we are rapidly approaching old age in this episode 61 of the Strip Poker Night at the Inventory podcast. We have we're still we're still four episodes away from being able to collect social security. So yeah, we've we've already we're already getting the AARP cards in the mail. It's God been a long time. It. Back in my day, we used I don't know I don't know like it like it, I thought fuck that. All right. So anyway, <laughs> on our podcast today with us. The joyous. Yeah, the only Python comes out in my crotch reveals. Oh no! Uh, the wonderful. It wasn't my fault. Author of Dawn, you know, bringing a new light onto Spinati. So uh, bringing false. a new light onto this format because the podcast yeah. is, is, is trying been, something new. Ooh. Yeah. Right, the, so the new format is that we talk over each other. <laughs> the new format. That's never that changed. It's always been that yeah. way. We're we're gonna be recording these in a in sort of smaller chunks you can you can expect this episode to be a little bit smaller i know those two hour episodes can be pretty intimidating especially for old folks like us who can't quite make th- make it through it without falling asleep so we're gonna we're gonna try to record more content but hopefully you know uh, break it up into more digestible chunks maybe like 30 minutes every every two weeks or so so we can, we can catch up quicker we can we can keep time better we can make it an easier editing job we can just go a little faster all right, Fault. Yeah, that, I mean, I agree with everything that's been on said. Fault, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little about, uh, you know, characters you've worked on. We'll, we'll give, we have a section for Dawn in a few minutes, but uh, what are you working on these days? How's Spinati going? What are you made? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, who I'm working on, I'm working on a few models. Uh, all of them, not all of them, but most of them are from freaking Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, doing Edelgard and Lysithia nice. and Marianne. I'm posing Marianne. Adding one more to the Mary pile, I see. Can you post them? Oh, can I post them? Yeah. Uh, let me go open that folder. And you're just doing the art for these? Uh, I'm doing the poses for Marianne. The rest, I'm doing the art. Okay. Uh, that being Lysithia and uh, Edelgard. As, as a known Fire Emblem plebeian, can you give me a quick rundown on these characters? Uh, yeah, so... I, I know Edelgard is the one that everybody hates. <laughs> really? Edelgard is a, is a controversial one. Uh, Edelgard's whole spiel is, uh... She wants to dismantle the current, uh... government system of, like... Nobles who are born with crests, which are basically just uh, heritage-given powers, are the ones that should be allowed to rule. Edelgard's is like, nah, that shouldn't that shouldn't fly. And so the only way to do that is to basically kill the church, which is like the whole. It's literally attacking and dethroning God, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> so that sounds pretty based. Cool. I like Edelgard. Everyone else who's, who doesn't can, can suck a dick. They're wrong. Not that sucking dick is wrong. Sucking dick is is wonderful, but just not not always essential to all situations all the time. Edelgard sucking your dick. How Based. do you feel about that? Based, to be honest. So what's the deal with the other two? Well, Lysithia is part of the Golden Deer House. I forgot to mention that Edelgard is the leader of the Black Eagle House. Lysithia is part of the Golden Deer House. Lysithia is, uh, uh, that's not too much of a spoiler. She's cursed with this, uh, thing that has basically reduced her lifespan by about half of its normal expectancy. And, uh, her whole thing is just like, I gotta keep working hard to make up for the time I don't have. And she, she's a overachiever. She pushes herself too hard. And she's also a little sassy some might say even a little bit of a bully but i mean kids are assholes and then with marianne uh she's also part of the golden deer so if we get we get lysithia and marianne the only one that would be missing from the golden deer house in spinati would be 
Raphael. And Claude. Actually, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Sure, one of our lovely server members is hard at work on given uh, his fix um, fixation on that one, character, Raphael. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Ca- yeah, Callie. I, men this men is of real. all shapes and sizes, really. Yeah, Callie. I know. I know what's up, dude. Don't worry. I know you're working on it. The thing with Marianne is that she is. Uh, I think she lost both of her parents and is currently living with her uncle and was enrolled into the officer's academy. And she's the the typical weird loner girl in the corner who also happens to be able to talk to animals. Just like for the first half of the game, she's just really like depressed. I don't want to be around people kind of person. And then like halfway into the story, she kind of goes through I don't want to say an arc because like there's nothing really explained about that, but it's just more of like, hey, I'm here now. I'm done being uh, sad for now, at least. I mean, that's the best way to get over depression, right? Just, just stop being sad, loser. Just stop, <laughs> stop being sad, loser. That's how it works. I'm a psychiatrist. It's like, do it, you know? My goodness, why didn't I think of that? Okay, well... Moving on from the from the psychology uh, psychological advice podcast, we're gonna this this agenda is gonna be a little a little shorter, a little snappier. Uh, we're we're mostly playing catch up because it's it's been a while, you know, deciding on this new format. We're but we're gonna try to move things along. We're gonna well, we're gonna keep efficient time. Damascus has got his chess clock out. I do, I do have my chess clock out. Let's fucking go. Really? I do. And we are going to go in the typical order. Uh, Fault, you're going to start us off with uh, each with uh, each character here that we're that we're going through the main roster, some recent main roster additions, not just characters, but uh, content additions as well, because things are happening in the things are happening in the Spinativerse. It's not just characters; it's it's a uh, it's epilogue content, it's art updates, and even uh, community wide stuff itself. It's been a while since we've had uh, epilogues. Yeah, it's going to be Fault, and then Namasp, and then yours truly, finishing things off. Great. Promise not to talk over you. This and other lies I've told on this you cast. Don't, you, don't, you don't talk over me so much as you just like forget that I have a turn. You just like move on when you're done talking. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty accurate. All right, anyway. Um, cool. So, we want to start in order? or Yeah, first on our agenda is... Um, Oh, you fine dandy, so proud, so cocksure. Jesus Christ. Prancing about with your hands full of eyeballs. All right, so starting our clock now, we have five minutes. Let's talk about Gloria, the beast from the eastern part of the world, if you're using the United States as your reference. Beast, I don't know. beast from the, the least from the west. Yeah. <laughs> The putting best from the hole, west. Putting, fu- putting fucking holes in your chest. She loves camping and curry. Um, all right, so, Fault, what do you think about Gloria? I and think, her glories. Yes. She's living up to her name being very glorious. As to say that Nora did a fantastic job with her writing. I remember at one point that I wanted to write her as, like, I just like, oh, I'm gonna call dibs. It's like, I never got around to her, and Dort's just like, hey, I want to write her. Is that cool with you? I'm like, yeah, sure. Because, like, I'm never going get, to get around to it. And I'm glad he did, because she came out fantastic. It's always fun just stopping just for a second, just be like, what the fuck is she saying? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it, it takes a little more, like, mental effort to, to read her dialogue sometimes. Oh, cool. anything else, or that, that yeah, where you are? I'm looking say, for uh, gifts of Gloria, but all I all I got is a uh, the hippo from Madagascar. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I so as of today, Nor just added interaction between Rosa and um, Gloria. Given the time lapse on these, basically Rosa goes down on Gloria. It's glorious, et cetera, et cetera. I I really like Gloria. I've given her criticism in the past of like being difficult to target because I think the Pokemon characters can end up extremely simple. And then I notice like I have my words in my mouth because like Nord put all the notes in the other notes section in the character editor. So I uh, disregard my opinion. I'm fucking terrible. But uh, 
Yeah, I think she's really interesting. I think the tone she brings to the game is really good. I also think, like, for Nord as a writer, this brings, like, a really good sense of witty wittiness without being, like, kind of annoying. Not that Nord's characters are ever annoying, but more just, like, she's very witty. Uh, the one thing that I will say is, like, criticism is, like, I, I, I just, like, I'm sorry. Like, I know people are going to, like, fucking lambast me over this, but the whole pubic hair pink that, like, peak thing is just... Is, kind of dumb like it's just like not necessary like you either wear underwear that covers it or you just expose it to me but anyway i think overall she's really good do that? i don't remember that she yeah does. like what like you go to her like stage five or like she, or you, we could see her like um oh, her swimsuit it's like you can see stuff poking out the top and not like this is like in here like not that the hair is bad but just like this idea like oh it's just poking out the top it's like eh, you know i don't know uh, I'm sorry, Nora. Like maybe you model critiques, but her character is is really good, so I can't really give you any other advice. I think I think she's listen, a- listen. B- bikini season in Scotland is like two days. Yeah, fair enough. So it's just not worth the effort. Yeah, I think she's cool. Like, I think she's a really cool character. I just also think she's like, I don't know. I, I feel like this is the type of character that you have to basically write a shitload of lines for before they start to like really click. Not as a criticism of like the writing is not good, but more just like in the sense of like what when she's at like three thousand lines and has like a lot of like unique interactions with a lot of people that are really special based on like who this character is and how Nord is interpreted her, I think she'll be a lot more oppressive. But I, I think like as a base, I'm like, yeah, it's okay, you know. It's definitely taken a lot of uh persistence to keep up the voice that she has. Yeah, agreed. That's it's really quite a challenge. Like, good work of art, excellent character. Glad she's a Spinati. Can't wait to see more from her. Span on. What do you think? You know, we usually say that uh, you know, canon is a way of life. You know, always stick to the to the canon accuracy, the canon portrayal as much as you can in Spinati. Gloria is an example where uh, not doing that was probably the right move. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The 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 fan and you know. Drunk Scottish lass, you know, ornery, ornery, uh, bug girl. That's, it's, it's just a lot more interesting than like the, the grandma's cookies eating ass, like generic, nice poker girl that we got like seven of them already. Do we already? And it's it just got no, nothing new to say. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like we usually say you stick to canon because the canon's written by like professional writers who are smarter and more talented than us. But I would not, I would not give a uh, game freak that same courtesy <laughs> level of respect. No. They basically just write the same generic, nice characters every game. <laughs> Who will solve everything with the power of friendship? Yeah, there's, there's just nothing to it really. So anything you can make up is, is probably better than <laughs> just sticking to the, to the baseline for a, for a Pokemon protagonist. So I don't fault uh, Nord for his creative decisions at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, congratulations to Gloria. Um, hitting the timer. Moving on. And actually, reader dialogue because like there's like actual oh, like good. content behind yeah. the weirdness. Yeah, she's cool. She's a real person. All right. Turned up. Turn it up. What? Well, yeah. Turned up. Also known as the best fucking character ever. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. So, turn it up. I have only had one game with her so far, but. I'm eager to have more games with her because her art is very good. First off, I love the shading on her dress and the, just a little detail with her eyes. I love that. Uh, in terms of her writing, it's uh, at the very first thing, it was a little grating to me, but that's just because like I'm used to writing Dawn and I, all the targets that involved her. But then like I got... I got into it. She's very harsh, and I got yeah, I got into it. Later on, into her later stages, I was fully vested. It's just like, man, I want to hear. I want to hear more about like what she has to say about uh, other uh, characters. Because when I played her, I only played her with uh, Gloria and uh, Spooky, and I don't think she had any other targets in between between those two. So like I need to play games with her that she has or play opponents with her that she has targets towards. 
Boy, howdy, those legs just go on forever. Those legs. I think the thing with Taranta, I've sung her praises before. I love her. She's super smart. She's super witty. She's, uh, she's beautiful. She's assertive. She, she's, uh, she knows what she's about. And she's just like funny. She's funny in an, in an intelligent way. She's not a good person, but she's very entertaining to, to read. <laughs> and uh, just how, how cynical she is about her position and her, and her sexuality in general. Uh, that said, to offer some some criticism going forward, I had like a pretty extensive talk with Dorian concerning like some targets because I kind of wanted to like lead in to uh to certain things. Like I kind of assumed certain things about her, like for example, that her setting would be like super like uptight and conservative, and like oh you know the princess should remain a virgin or, or whatever, and you don't want to see her with any strange men, but. Her reaction, it was kind of hard to like predict her reaction to things because it turns out that wasn't really the case. But what was weird was, you know, despite that, like, it's okay for, you know, a character to kind of subvert the expectations of like how you might stereotype them by looking at them. You know, characters don't have to be stereotypes. But, you know, what, what they are instead should be, I think, pretty clearly communicated. And I think that's the, that's the current flaw she has is that. In terms of like like the world that she inhabits and like what time period it is and like what's the level of like technology and like social progress, like where do they stand on different issues? Where does she stand on different issues? Like how much attention does she get? What are her thoughts on a lot of like kind of more intimate sexuality or like dating and stuff? It's not like a hundred percent clear. And he, he and he admitted himself that like he hadn't put enough thought into it, which kind of made it hard to to develop those interactions. So either even though like the base is really strong, I think he needs to spend a little more time in, in terms of like where he wants to take her going forward to like really get into like the the, the depths of her character to have those really like strong interactions. Because otherwise, it's it's hard to plan things out if you have no idea what they're gonna say. <laughs> Or if, or if you uh, think you have a good idea and it, she kind of shoots it down because he's like, oh no, you know, it's actually not a big deal if I was seen with a man or whatever. So that would be my advice. But yeah, uh, go play her. You, know, you yeah. may have only played her once, Fault, but uh, at, the, at the end of the day, that's all you need because you can just swear to... You just, you just swear your dick off from anywhere else. Just from anyone else. You just, you just come to her for all time. That's, a, that's all you need. Come to her. Yeah. Just a daily come tribute to the princess. God, <laughs> I, I really, I really like her and Dot. I think she's really, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming there's nothing but positive things said besides like some criticisms. Yeah, I, I think she's really great. I think the one thing that Dorian, just like as a writer in general, is like, I, I think he creates these incredibly well crafted niche products, and it would be great if he were more proactive in reaching out for interactions and commentary. Like to, I think I caught the tail end of that in Span's point is basically she kind of shuts some stuff down like pretty simply, but I think like I get that these are art projects more than they are for other people with Dorian. There's there's a lot of like lore details that seem kind of vague, which makes it hard makes it very hard to pin down. Well, yeah, I mean like okay, like literally Dorian is one of the four people that's like consumed this forum media, so you know. Yeah, but um, and she's ungoogleable. I would really like it. All that comes up as a play. I, I think Turndot's a really great character. I think like all Dorian's characters are excellent. It would be great if he like took a pass. Like I am going to send out a thousand targeted lines from all of my characters total to like start interactions. I think they would really start to shine under those parameters. Like Dorian as a generic writer is really good, and his targeted lines are super strong. It's just a little hard to fully engage with sometimes. So well, I think like, mm-hmm. yeah. What, pe- people meme on like Maya's low amount of like rule 34 results. I looked up Turan dot. Big zero. fat zero. Big fat zero. Mission accomplished. Not, Mission not accomplished. even, <laughs> not even cool. like the, for the play. <laughs> All right. All right, folks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving on to the next, moving on to the next Dawn. The, the main Dawn. event. Yeah, so Don is the character Diamond created, of our pearls. created by Fault uh, himself with some other folks who contributed. Of course, Killer did the model. But it wasn't his fault. It was his success. It was. It All was right. my success. So, Fault, go ahead and tell us a little about like, why you made Don, what you enjoyed writing about her, what you're less happy about, you know, things like that. Like, what do you want to see more of like, with this project? Where do you want to go with it? Like, what do you, what were you, what was the challenge? What was fun? 
what do you want to see more of? There you go, bro. Okay. So what made me at first want to write Dawn was just when I first uh, joined the community, I am just was under the impression just like, oh, there's somebody, somebody already made like an older version of Dawn. Well, I can just like take over on that and see what, and then I take a look at the lines. It's like, oh, ugh. Oh yeah, it's easy to forget that like Dawn originally existed, like a, you know an older version. She never fucking she had. She's one of the first games I. She's one of the first characters I played in Spinati. She didn't. She didn't even have her hat. She didn't have her hat for God's sake. <laughs> but you're her like defining character trait. But yeah, it's like a Toho, it's like a Toho character. It's the most important thing. Anyways, uh, and I took a look at those lines. Just like we're starting from scratch. I got this fantastic model from Horse Killer. I'm, I'm gonna do it right, and I took my time with it. I was going through a lot of the time, and having this sort of creative outlet that, like, yeah, it was horny, but like also at the same time, just like it was fun trying to come up with like, you know, this is whole joke of the whole like, oh, it's a, it's a skinwalker, it's a an OC, but like, kind of like we mentioned already with the. Uh, it's hard to make a pokey girl that doesn't just spout the same shit that the others haven't already. So I mostly focused on making her like kind of like a college student where mm. her whole goal was to become a professor. You you took the really interesting approach in that she's not the player character. She's supposed to be like the, the NPC version of the character. Right? Yeah. My main uh, inspiration with that was just kind of like, back when I was a wee lad, I was like, what, eight years old, something like that, when Diamond Pearl came out? I don't even Holy know. Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> dude, it was like, how it's long not, ago? It's not that crazy. I was 10 when they came out, so. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, you're feeling old now, because Diamond Pearl came out like... A, more than a decade ago. I need to stop making porn with like f- like twenty year olds, man. It's like you guys are all too fucking young. I'm I'm twenty five. The fuck you are. You're older than I am. I'll be twenty six this month. No, you're not. Oh god. All right. Sorry. My existential crisis aside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I, I remember I, all the first games that like I actually connected with. I'd say because they they were they were kind of like my games. You know, they came out when I was ten. You know, the optimal Pokemon age. I played like Emerald before that, but I didn't really get into it. Probably too hard. I, that's actually kind of like the same thing I had with it. Was just kind of like I had like a, a little Catholic crush on Dawn. Like when we're that age and we're playing with uh, NPCs that are like really friendly to you, it's just like, well, yeah, kind of makes sense. So I kind of wanted to appeal appeal to that audience where it's just kind of like. Cool. So, some people grew up with this character and like had childhood crushes like I did. Let me fill in that niche. Makes sense to me. Cool. So, so what would you say is like the sort of like the main pitch of her of her character in in Fnatic? What's like the main theme? What's what does she kind of harp on the most? Uh, originally, she was supposed to be like an activist for Pokemon welfare and stuff, but like, I think I just wanted to. Myself and other people suggested that I don't do that and just kind of like keep her more grounded, not so much in your face with like world, real world inspired issues. You know, because we're just here, we're just here to fap, not t- not worry about like politics and other nasty stuff out there. She want to fuck. I'm sorry. Who does she want to fuck? That's always a good question to ask yourself as a Spinati creator. Uh, I've always uh, just been like, she's she's open. She's fairly open. She leans more towards guys, but it's more like, oh, hey, I'm surrounded by all these people who are just as horny as I am. Let's get let's give it a shot. Do you find like, do you find when you're writing Dawn, it's like hard to target out to like other characters? Like in the sense, of, like in the sense of like to like solicit them for like to have Dawn thirst, for lack of a better phrase, right? 
Yeah, I just kind of always assumed it was kind of like a me thing, where I was I had difficulty writing targets to other people, but it's kind of come to the conclusion that unless they the character themselves that I'm trying to target is of a similar caliber, like say, uh, like a franchise mate or uh, someone who was also kind of like in this scientific field. Like I remember you and I were doing targets between uh, Dawn and Sucrose. Was that probably like the Christmas pigeons thing or was that just like a long time? Never mind. I, it was it was kind of a while ago, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just kind of like I've Dawn excels best when she's kind of explaining these concepts to new people, and so, so she's no. kind of like the reverse of a usual like Pokemon protagonist in that way. Because like the, the other Pokemon characters are kind of like, oh well, you know, it, it like how many you know there, there's so many writers out there who are like I don't want to explain what a Pokemon is, and it's like well you picked the wrong fucking character, my guy. But so I think like if her real interest is explaining that kind of stuff and sort of like attaching like other worlds to Pokemon, I, I really do think that having her reach out to other characters about like various Pokemon things and just being like a fucking aficionado about it is like a great concept for Dawn because none of the other characters oh, yeah. do that. that. That's a really neat uh, X factor, actually. It's like taking initiative and like, you know, yo, this, this, this or that Pokemon would be perfect for you. Hey, Marinette, you like Letty, like Letty Ba or le- like. Like whatever, like no. Yeah, well, fuck you. Button. You're gonna get one. Here's the fuck. I have it right now on my belt. And here's, like, conveniently. Here's, here's a here's a letty, but it's a piece of shit. Here it is. It's, it's <laughs> yours. It's a piece of shit, but this one is yours. Do not do not take it to competitive. Yeah, it's like fucking go go. Got it. Use your fucking wall hacks to beat the game. Ladybug. Listen, I don't, I don't envy the the job you have to do because well, like, like it's so like it's such an interesting, cool factor though, because like no one does that. No one's like. Hi, I'm I'm I don't know, like I'm Jesse. Let me talk to you about Pokemon. Like no one does that. It's yeah. like trying to make a good character despite the genre, and Don just needs to go fucking full into it being like, all right, motherfuckers, let's talk to you about Pokemon for the night. Let's talk about EVs and just be like, Eevee? No, like evolutionary values. Let me go like I want her to be like a crackhead, like scientist. Mas- about it. Um actually, actually in the mask, they're called effort values. Okay. Uh <laughs> well, you know, Get poker us. So like I have the, I have caught poker us on three separate occasions. Thank you. Well, well, stop sticking your dick in the Pokemon spin on anyway. Anyway, yeah, like, yeah with, the, with the, my the thing uh, about our Pokemon characters, right? Is that they are obsessed with Pokemon. Yeah. Everyone in the world is obsessed with Pokemon, and then they're put in this environment in Spinati where nobody knows what a Pokemon is. That's not that's not easy to write. Like you know, you know the the be- the whole like Bechdel test for for fictional yeah you know, like fictional media like you know find find two women having a conversation that's not about a man well like try that with Pokemon but just like go through a Pokemon game and try to find like a conversation longer than three lines that's like not about Pokemon. I don't think it's doable. I legitimately don't think it's possible. Like, anyway. Every single fucking character in the game talks about Pokemon, so it's not. It's, it's just a worldwide obsession. Yeah, imagine being like the one guy in Pokemon that just not just does not give a fuck. It's just like trying to do his job. He's just like an accountant. Like, I'm an electrical engineer. Oh, you so you like Voltorb? No, I just want to figure out the fucking science, guys. Like, like we can't rely on these. Th- anyway, you, you know, like right? We can't rely on these wild creatures. He's like he's like an accountant, and he's, he's meowts to keep stealing his shit. But yeah, anyway. like that, that's a that's a super good idea that, that Namas just threw out there is uh, being more like really proactive with it, like introducing Pokemon to other people. Because if she's up like a professor type, that'd be awesome. Yeah, like the my last update that was her sponsorship update. I shipped out a few lines that like I started to go more into like during her stripping uh, phases. I started to include like, hey, here's a, a Pokemon fun fact. Like, I love the idea of Dawn being like, I know you guys don't really give a shit about my scarves. So let me tell you some fucking cool Pokemon facts. Like, that's like the coolest thing. I want like, like, I want Dawn to be like a PhD, like who's drunk off her ass talking about her like subject matter. And like in the sense of just like being like, you're all a captive audience for whatever autistic bullshit got me this PhD in Pokenomics and you're not escaping. 
you I think your personal experiences and, and biases are, are bleeding into this a little bit. I just wrote sucrose from a place of very, very, it was a very therapeutic experience. Anyway, um, yeah, so write down that way and I'll be happy. But, you know, don't, don't, don't just please me. Please, please the whole world. Cool. Anyway. Don's cool. Yeah. I like uh, that's, that's the, that's the X factor I'd really like to see. Yeah. Just give her that X factor and she's like infinitely more like engaging. Like she's good. Like I think she's well written. Just like, like all Pokemon characters, I, it's the, yeah, you know, this is going to sound fairly dismissive, but it's like, it's the so what test. It's like, cool. They're cute. There's lots of cute characters in here that are like, got some, got some stuff to talk through. And that's, that's what makes them interesting. Like I, I just revived the thread on like Spinati characters and like their Pokemon teams. Don't you just like head cannon of Pokemon team for everybody? I'm there for it. Do you have any, do you have any final thoughts on, on Don fault? Uh, my final thoughts are I need to focus on getting some of those alt costumes that she has in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on her. Like what? Neat. Uh, there's like the summer one I was trying to work on. Uh, there was that Easter one that I had, like the, the bunny suit, but it's actually like a Glaceon suit. You, you, sh- you should do like the, the Legends Arceus outfit. Like people would go for Oh, yeah, for that, that makes that. Yeah, it's just Dawn. Just do it. Just do like traditional dawn outfit for Halloween, easy. Do like that's a, that's also a thing. It's just like, how do I apply that? Because Akari is a whole different character. Well, uh, yeah, but you just found in a closet. No, no. Look here, real talk. The more you can block off the other Pokemon characters from getting made, the more likely the people that would make them make other characters. So trust me, make them all costumes. Done. Signed, sealed, and delivered by Namask, the fucking like shitlord slumlord of of targeted lines. <laughs> Okay, uh, nice. you, don't, you don't have to think that hard about all costumes. Just like, yeah. just do it. Like, people want to see it. There, there's an all costume coming out um, that is based. That I, I am just enamored with this concept of like a character from like one world that's like pretending to be from another one. Like, I know there's like there's like a comment about this with like Wikipedia. Tan is like pretending to be a magma grunt, but it's like kind of like that. Like, imagine like if you did a, an all costume for like. Maya, right? But Maya is from like Genshin Impact or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it, like that kind of no, thing is like. Oh, no, I don't know what you mean. What the fuck does that mean? It's like it's like Maya, but she grew up in like Genshin Impact land instead of like Vandred land. You know what I mean? What the fuck like, does that mean? <laughs> okay, so run with me on this, right? She have like a robe, like a kipao, like shit, dude. I don't know. It's guys the fucking or... limit. Like, like, so basically, back in... What um, relevance is that at all? What? What relevance is that? It's super cool. Like, I don't know. I, I really, like, I, I'm, I'm there for it. Like, it's, the person, it's just basically characters cosplaying as if they were it, from, it, another from another world. Franchise. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, that's super cool. Like, I, uh, like, the person who's writing it was talking to me about it, and I'm like, this is such a dumb idea. And then, like, they explained it more, and I'm like, I'm actually really here for it. Like... A Pokemon character that's like from I don't know, like League of Legends, or like a League of Legends character that's like in Genshin Impact, or like a League of Legends character that's like I don't know, like you know what I mean? Like take the character from the franchise that they were like actually from, but then put them in another franchise and then kind of like back justify yourself. That that's so I fascinating think, to me. I think we Maya already does that with Cupid Maya because that's like Maya from Monster yeah. Girl Encyclopedia. Yeah, but, like exactly. That's so fucking cool, dude. I'm there for it. I, I did that because the phone box was like, "Hey, I'll, I had this idea, and I will do all the work for you." It's like, okay. Why? Why is like phone box the fucking glue that holds this game together? It's just like phone box. I need a model. Phone box is just like done. Hey, how did I? If, I you, are, like, if you are willing to just make an alt costume for me, I will write some lines for it. Like, I love you, phone box. You're a good guy. But, yeah. Um, my 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 current. My current idea for Maya, a Maya all costume is just bathing suit. I mean, she's got the because layers. that's actually in promo art. Okay, finally. But anyway, I, the moral of the story of this is like I think writing like Don as like the history character is like fine, and then you can have it be a teachable moment. Don being like, "This is like a concept, a costume for my ancestors. Let me explain to you about the history region." And like, you know, like it just lets her just like go off on her fucking tangents. I think it's great. Do it. Okay, I didn't think about that actually. I, I like that idea. Yeah, or like you know, like I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like fixating on the Genshin Impact thing, which is like 
weird because I've never actually played the game. But I also think a good option is to be like for Dawn to like for the like the Genshin characters fixate on what a vision means. Be like, oh, is it just like a Pokeball? You know, shit like that, right? Where it's like it just does not like things that are like not actually analogous, like kind of trying to have those discussions is really interesting to me. As a writer, maybe they're not for you. Who cares? Like, do what you got to do, man. Yeah, I need to. I just need to target more characters, man. I, I need to, like, focus on targets, but that's just me. Yeah. False. False. Yes. I am once again asking you to write Dawn Lines to Maya, calling her a Team Galactic grunt. That's great. I'll get to it at some point. Just do it right now. Just do it immediately. That way you won't forget. Right, I mean, if I do it right now, you'll hear my keyboard clacking. I don't care. Cool. I think uh, Solitaire would. All right. So I think that draws us to the end of episode one of this recording set. Do we want to clear mic, give it a second, and then we'll hop back in episode two, which is the epilogue discussions? Uh, Okay. Yeah, sure. You want to take like a five minute break? Yeah, let's take a five minute break. So that's going to do it for our uh, for our shorter format for this uh, for the episode sixty one. But we will be back at you very shortly with episode sixty one point five. Fault is still going to be on. Sorry, I just had to record this outro a little bit later because you know we're still getting used to the format. But I hope you all enjoyed this uh, this shorter, this bite sized episode. You find it easier to watch and or to listen to. And we're going to be right back into it very shortly. So stay tuned. <laughs>